To me, that mm -hmm. is a win. That's a huge win. And it's a luxury that not a lot of people have. And you were able to take your kind of like creative destiny by the reins and like say, this is what I want out of the business. And this is what you've created. So I'm just so, so, so happy to hear about that. Like Craft Academy is so different. Coaching calls, the support from the community, the modules, you, you think it, it's something in there. So this is more like I knew I wanted to do events in person. And I said, what is that going to take? I did a couple other courses and it's, you know, they give you things here and there, general ideas about pricing. Like I, t I took a pricing course and I was like, this didn't really help me. But Craft Academy is like the blueprint if you want to be an event artist and it is helpful in so many other ways too. Hello, hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. I am so excited because we have a special guest today. So we've got Joanna from Lettercrafted Inc. and I'm so excited to share her story because this is honestly, you guys, a really, really great one. Um, we've known each other for several years now. I'm just excited to share her story. So Joanna, welcome. Thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Yes, us too. Oh, me too. Well, me and the baby are excited. <laughs> Um, all right. So if you guys don't know me yet, it's so nice to meet you. Um, thanks for tuning in. My name is Rosie. I'm the calligrapher behind Wandercrafter. I'm also the founder and coach of the Craft Academy, where we help calligraphers, just like Joanna, create, automate, and scale their calligraphy businesses based on their unique story and methodology. Ever since I started my business in 2017, I have made countless, countless, countless mistakes and made so many errors and wasted so much time, money, anxiety, trying to figure everything out on my own. And once I started working with these bigger brands and really figuring out my niche, I was able to work with awesome brands like Dior, NBC, Ferrari, and now I'm on a mission to help calligraphers and calligraphy entrepreneurs work with their own dream brands and accelerate their path to success as well. So please make sure you subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any more of these awesome videos. Um, and now I'm excited to introduce Joanna, who actually used our methodology to transform her business from a very expensive hobby to a thriving full-time calligraphy business. Prior to the Craft Academy, Joanna described herself as, you know, being in a race to the bottom on Etsy, trying to beat pricing and wear herself out in the process. After joining the Craft Academy, she's been able to achieve so much more in her business and have actually been able to do live events and find her ideal clients and work for brands just like Tori Burch, CoverGirl, and Gillian Paris, just to name a few. So Joanna, welcome. Can you tell us your journey to entrepreneurship? Yeah, so back in 2018, my sister asked me to do her place cards for her wedding. So that was like the initial like learning about it, like thin upstrokes, thick downstrokes. It came out good. It was all right. Um, looking back now, I'm like, oh my goodness. But anyways, so from there, I kind of was doing like digital calligraphy on my iPad through like 2019, 2018, 2019. And then COVID hit. So then that's when I decided to start this business. I was doing digital calligraphy and then the like a week before COVID shut the world down, I left my job thinking like, oh, I'll just find a new one, like no big deal. The joke is on me because the world shut down and it I didn't wasn't on unemployment or anything like that. So I decided I was going to do Etsy and see what that brings. And I was like, oh, I set everything up. I did it quietly. I didn't say anything to anyone about it. And I was like, oh, if I get my first sale, like then that's it. Like I'll just move forward with that. So. Sure enough, I think it was like a week or two later, I got a sale, it was like a picture frame order. I was like, this is it, here we go. And ever since then, it's been a business. So that's how I get started. And now I just, it's something I never even imagined. Yeah, I actually really love that story. Um, not the part where you didn't get unemployment or anything like that, <laughs> but like you finding yourself in a position where you had to help yourself and you leaned into your creative side and made your first sale the first couple of weeks. And that is a true testament to like you wanting to make your own path um, mm -hmm. and just knowing that like not like things are not going to end up easy for you. You kind of have to take life by by the reins and just do your own thing. So now you are here, you're in the Craft Academy, you have the business. Um, what is your specialty in calligraphy now? So now it's on-site calligraphy engraving. I am adding painting, woo! -hoo. 
and um, wedding signage. So seating charts, mirror rentals, more so than anything else. So you started off with calligraphy, doing things on Etsy. What did that kind of look like for you? Like, I know it was like the pandemic time. Um, what did your daily life and schedule kind of look like when you first started Lettercrafted Inc.? Um, so it was kind of all over the place. Um, like it was orders here and there, but not, it wasn't um, consistent. So a lot of learning, essentially like a race to the bottom. Cause you don't realize when you start this, it's like, you know, add shipping, what does shipping even cost? Like Etsy can charge it, but then I would go to the post office and it's like $5 more than what was anticipated. So it was a lot of like trial and error, figuring things out figuring out pricing and it always felt like Etsy to, to me and my experience felt like a race to the bottom like it was very hard to gain traction I was doing you know I had place cards on there but it was more like picture frames or like um like special custom like those like four by six the bottom had like a frame and you put their names and it would be like their table numbers or they could put photos things like that um so those were big but it wasn't like cons super consistent it was you know in my experience Etsy is more of like has turned into more of like price shopping and this and that. And I understand people have to do what they do, but for me, it wasn't anything that was like sustainable. Yeah. Um, so then from there, I wanted to do more wedding stuff. Um, I'm trying to think of timelines. So 2020 was mainly Etsy. I was working with a woman. She had a business doing the like tent sleepover parties. So I would do the name chalkboards for her and that was okay. It was more consistent, but still like I felt like I didn't know anything about pricing. I didn't know how to price things for her. I was doing these, you know, like e t like chalkboard easel A-frames with designs and it was for like $10, like a piece. And it just was not sustainable. And then 2020, I went back to coaching when the gyms opened. From there, January, 2021, I tore my ACL again. I was out and then I ended up going back to coaching. But I remember through all of that, I was like, I can't, like Etsy isn't sustainable. I can't rely on it. I kind of have to do something more for myself. So I did um, wedding signage. So that year I did a styled shoot. I did a little bit of a brand shoot. It was like a combined thing, which was really cool, but it wasn't, my timeline's messed up. That was 2022. 2021 <laughs> is when I found you on TikTok. And I remember seeing it and I was like, oh my goodness, this is what I want to do. I want to be in person. Digital anything isn't helping me like digital calligraphy, like iPad stuff. That wasn't working. Etsy wasn't working. And I saw your TikTok and I was like, this is what I want to do. In person, live events on the spot. So then I reached out. I was still coaching at the time. And I was like, oh, like, let me wait. I don't know if anyone's ever coached competitive gymnastics, but it is very time consuming, stressful, consistent. Like you have to... I, I was working six days a week. It's It was a lot, so I decided to wait. Mm -hmm. I should have just done it, but um, should have just joined the Craft Academy when I first had my call. But you live and you learn, and now I'm here. <laughs> but it just has been so crazy seeing the change in my business mm -hmm. from it. So I knew that's what I wanted to do and set out from there. And I think it was like May is when I joined, 2022. The next day, I kid you not, the next day I got an inquiry from a event planning company to do place cards in the Hamptons for Vacheron Constantine. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but it just was kind of like a sign like, oh, positive reinforcement. Yeah, and that was a super awesome. cool like event that you were doing in the Hamptons because they like paid for your travel um, and you were able to do like place cards or something, right? Mm -hmm. That, that's awesome. Like I remember us talking on our very first call and you were like, oh, gymnastics is, you know, I'm like a coach, but it's very rigorous. Um, and I just like don't have the time to do what I want to do. And so it kind of felt like your life was revolving around a job that you didn't necessarily love. And um, I think it was like a year later, right? Like at least a year and a half later that you finally joined the Craft Academy and just like that, like you have this inquiry in the Hamptons. And I'm not going to say like TCA probably didn't have a lot to do with that. It was probably just luck and timing. Um, but being able to help you through that, like how to price, how to charge for travel um, and things like that. I feel like that was still beneficial in to, to a certain extent. Um, and just making sure you are set up for success and that the time that you are spending traveling to the Hamptons from New York is actually going to be beneficial for you. Absolutely. And, it, you know, having that at that point, I was still new, but like having people to like bounce things off of at that time was so helpful because I was like, I don't know. You know, I worked with like an agency 
before that doing like in-person orders for them but mm -hmm. it's like so different when it's on site for brands and you're doing you're working with event planners like it is a different experience so so helpful having even though i didn't really get to like jump in it was still so helpful having people to say hey like how do i go about this like what is the normal standard for this and be more professional and for me i think right it was luck and timing they reached out but it was also like okay i'm in the right direction like this is like keep pushing forward keep doing everything that you're doing because it's it's working you know right yeah yeah absolutely um we're all about community here uh with the craft academy like we just love connecting people all over the world and making sure everyone is set up for success so joanna is a prime example of that and i'm so happy we're able to help you through that um what do you feel like was the thing that finally got you to enroll in the craft academy because i think we, it had been a little bit of time so what was like the the moment for you that you were like i have to join this program and i have to change something about my life and my business you know i love coaching it it is rewarding in its own way but i mean for all the it's like physical labor you know it's intense it's stressful you're at competitions you're traveling different things and like it sounds like great and glamorous but it's also like it takes its toll and for me i wanted to be able to have my own schedule like coaching i missed so many you know holidays and, and different things not holidays but like birthdays like it's very tricky to get time off so for me it was like i wanted to own my own schedule have it be what i wanted my life to be mm -hmm. And um, when I found it, I was still coaching and I was committed to a competitive season. You have to, you know, there's consistency that is required with that. So for me, I think when we had that call, I was like, okay, this is something I want to do, but I knew I had to wait. So looking back, I wish I just did it so I could absorb and soak in all the information. But for me, it was a, I can't really commit my time to this yet, but that's where I want to go. So as soon as we were done competing, I think um, it was May, 2022, states happened. And then that following week, I was like, okay, this is it i'm in going all in and i it. knew <laughs> at that point i was like i can't commit to another year so you know like the end of june i told them i was leaving i didn't want to coach anymore and it worked out but i knew back in that first call like this was going to be my path but it was going to take some time mm. and i had to like adjust my life here and there until i got there yeah so Tell me, what is your life like now? Like you've joined the Craft Academy. It's been, it's February, 2024 now. So it's been almost two years of you being in the program, which like how time flies, how crazy is that? Crazy. Um, what I'm hearing a lot right now is like, you fitting your life around your gymnastics training schedule and you making your life fit into your job. What does your life look like now? And how's that script been flipped? it is opposite so now i would say calligraphy is my full time and i you know get to schedule the events i want to schedule and and do the things that i want to do and you know book vacation and not stress like obviously when you own a business it's not really like full vacation mode like you have to do things here and there like i'll still answer my email sometimes but like it's having that opportunity to do that or it being you know january and it's a slow season and i can say hey i want to do this on a weekend and and it's just me not scheduling anything and having that freedom to do it so it's awesome and you know even still working like doing like admin and like computer stuff for the gym they're so supportive and work with me for everything i need to do so i'm incredibly blessed and thankful in that way because they do know about it and are very supportive which is like you know sometimes i hear it's like unheard of People yeah. will ask me, they're like, oh my God, they know and they don't give you a hard time. And I'm like, no, they're great. You know, like I can't, couldn't ask for anything more. So I love that you're still able to do both passions, you know, be in mm -hmm. the gymnastics world, but also really put more of your effort towards your creative business. And you're totally right. Like the owning your own business, you never really are clocked out of like your job, right? You're always thinking about it, always thinking about ways to change it. Um, but you feel so much more fulfilled because this is your journey, your life that you're creating and making your business actually fit into your life instead of making your life fit into your business. To me, that mm -hmm. is a win. That's a huge win. And it's a luxury that not a lot of people have. And you were able to take your kind of like creative destiny by the reins and like say this is what i want out of the business and this is what you've created so i'm just so 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 happy to hear about that yes it's definitely been awesome i really this is what i've always kind of wanted 
and wanted to to have and it like coaching is the complete in my experience opposite it's like you know you're chained into like practice days and competitions and the schedule isn't set by you pretty much ever so you're just kind of like into whatever is decided and this is like i decide now yeah and it's a complete 180 so so much better uh. I'm just so happy for you. Like that makes me so happy to hear that you've been able to adjust your life and truly design the life that you want to live. Um, so I'm honestly like so happy in my heart. I'm like literally I could retire now and I'd still be good. <laughs> um, cool. So what was different about this course compared to some of the others that you've maybe looked at or um, tried out uh, in the past? So this is like Craft Academy is so different. Coaching calls, the support from the community, the modules, you, you think it, it's something in there. So this is more like I knew I wanted to do events in person. And I said, what is that going to take? I did a couple other courses and it's, you know, they give you things here and there. General ideas about pricing. Like I, I took a pricing course and I was like this didn't really help me but craft academy is like the blueprint if you want to be an event artist and it is helpful in so many other ways too so you know like creative calligraphy i come from a background of business like i have a business degree specialization in accounting i knew everything about website development seo just a good like rounded knowledge of these things and i still find so much value in the craft academy like you know like just you know how to show up professional what what do you need on the day of just all these different little tips some things you would never even thought of that make your life a thousand times easier or it's you know modules you know one day i want to do a workshop and that's handled i know it's in there and i can reference that there's so many great things to reference and the community you just you know if it's not in the modules you ask and there's you know so many members with experience to respond to you or say hey like this is where i learned it from or maybe check this out or this person's done that ask them it's incredible it really just is unmatched because this community i find with certain people it's very restrictive about information and you know i get it community um competition and stuff but i'm a big community person i think that's partly why i'm still in the gymnastics community like this is something i hugely value there's more to it than just you know showing up and coaching like it's a com you know community there and it's a community here too it's just immensely valuable yeah ah, love it thank you so much for <laughs> for giving us those kudos um, oh, of course like joanna said there's so much information in the craft academy and even if it's not in the program we cover it on our coaching calls we meet twice a week and it's really student-led like we literally don't get off of the call until everyone's questions have been answered and it's just a great place to like get motivated for your business get inspired to try different things and shoot for higher things that you originally didn't even think about and even for me i still find it very inspiring because everyone in the program is a go-getter. They're all entrepreneurs. They're all CEOs and bosses. And I learn from the students just as much as they learn from me. Um, and I can only hope that we continue to pay this forward into our community. Absolutely. And side note, like, I think this is an added bonus, like in the um, coaching calls every week, it's like, if you have tea and you don't want to spill it, right? Like I'm very particular about what I'll put in text. If I have a weird experience, I'm like, hey, we can talk about it in person and it's like I'm not held to a text message or like an email about it, but it's like I can share that experience and know that I'll get like advice or or different things. And it's, you know, those moments where I'm like, uh, like this is weird. I don't really want to put it out there, but I also need guidance for it. And it's right. just a little bit of like a safer environment than, you know, it's like blasting it on online or something. Right. Yeah. 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 Something that you could be held liable for. Um, yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, sometimes I'll talk about like my own experiences with brands because live events, you guys, it's like, I know it sounds glamorous and it looks glamorous from the outside, but what, when you're in it and you're in it for a long time, there are, there's so much, so many things that go wrong. Um, so many, you know, horrible clients and things that you might want to deal with or have to deal with. So it's great to like have people come up onto our coaching call and they'll just do like a, a debrief and kind of like a summary of what they learned, any lessons learned, any drama, how they handled it and things like that. And that really continues to help, 
you know, others kind of prepare and kind of what to watch out for. Because, you know, in the luxury realm, there are people who might feel more entitled because they are much more well off than we are. Um, and we have to kind of handle that in a professional way. So how do we, those pieces of drama and handle it in a more professional way so that we still look good to the client and we continue to get hired on in the future. Um, but also, you know, just handling it professionally and not throwing it out there just for, just to stir up things. We're here to learn and we're here to move forward from that experience and kind of pay it forward to the rest of the community and future generations too. Yeah. And I would even add on to that too. Like sometimes when we're, we're put into like public facing situations, and it's you're dealing with so many different personalities. Sometimes, you know, there's just maybe a person who doesn't know any better and will like test the boundaries and tr- and you're like, hey, well, how do I deal with that professionally and still say, hey, like this is is what we have to do. And and it's, you know, kind of navigating all those things that you don't really experience until you experience them. Right. And hearing other people have, you know, different things happen. It's it's so valuable. A hundred percent. Totally agree. Um, there's just so much that you don't know about the industry and it's so much easier and more effective if you can like listen to other people's stories and learn from that and pull that experience into your own so that when it does happen to you you're not learning it the hard way you you can think like oh what would rosie do or like what did joanna do in this specific situation to handle the crowd and make sure that everyone has a positive experience so that's such a great point joanna thank you so much for bringing that it happens to me all the time and so like it's just cool to like have your perspective kind of be brought on as well. Yeah, it's just something I thought of because it's not like, you know, it does seem so glamorous and luxurious. And on Instagram stories, you're only catching, you know, a couple interactions, mostly like done products. And, you know, more so when it's public facing, you deal with so many different, you know, scenarios and, and different things. So, you know, most people don't post about that. That's not really Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah right. that's such a good point too, because you don't know who's following you, right? Like I have 9,000 followers and a quarter of that could be advertising agencies, my other companies that I've worked with, some managers that have hired me and stuff. So like, you don't want to go online and blast that information to the rest of the world because they'll see that and view it on a negative level versus like these coaching calls, they're more private they are recorded obviously and put into the facebook group but like we have that community over competition mindset and we take those lessons and we learn from it we're not going to go out and like blast that company um and speak negatively and potentially harm our chances of getting hired in the future especially like it is hard to navigate because it's coming from a point of like how how do i navigate the situation and have it be helpful but in the world of like the digital age we are now it's like everyone's gonna find some portion that you didn't nuance and it's like well hey did you think about this or that or this different situation and it's like well i just need help but it can be perceived as like you know complaining and that's not ever really what right. we want to do we want to be able to show up confidently and be like okay now i know how to handle this situation if it pops up yeah yeah exactly yeah love that um Perfect. So shifting gears a little bit, um, in addition to like the coaching calls, what do you feel like was the biggest change that you made in your business since you started the program? Mindset, more so around like ideal clients, money, time management, like a lot of that stuff gets brought into, it's like the very first thing you have in the modules for Craft Academy. So it's so helpful to sit down and and say like, okay, well, if this is where I want to go, how do I do that? what kind of limiting things do I have that could be worked out? You know, the 90 day letter, different things that and tools you can use to really just overcome that and say, okay, well, I can do this. And, you know, speaking from experience, like I've done it and I am like, oh, wow. Like, you know, you just don't realize. And then it's amazing. I don't know how else to put it. (laughs) Love it. I know I've like, I still remember because like our first call was in like 2021 or something. So like, I still remember that call very distinctively and just like how lost you were and like how unsure you were in your business. And now that you've, you know, rebranded and now we're focusing more on like luxury brands and services. um, It's just amazing to see that transformation and see how your life has just 
shifted and you just seem lighter, like happier. So I'm just really, really thrilled for you. So without getting too specific, because I know, you know, we've talked about your life changing significantly since joining the program. Um, you were able to take your full-time job uh, as a gymnastics coach, turn it into your part-time job, and now calligraphy is your full-time. So yay, congratulations there. Um, without getting too specific, what was your income for 2023 compared to like the year prior to joining TCA? So the year prior to joining TCA, I probably did not even take a profit. If I did, it was not a lot because that I was still Etsy, race to the bottom, all that stuff. So in 2023, I made five figures and I made more than my gymnastics coaching salary, which is awesome. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, huge, huge, huge congratulations there. Um, I'm sure it's really hard to be a gymnastics coach. Um, well, we talked about that. Um, I know gymnastics coaching was really challenging for you in so many ways and for you to be able to have control of your schedule, work with the ideal clients that you want to work with and still be able to make more than that. Like that is a huge, incredible feat for me. So I'm literally so happy for you, Joanna. And I just know there's so much more coming for you. So one of the things that I love doing with our case studies is really diving into the tactical tip portion. So when you think about that, um, what is like the one piece of tactical advice that you would give to our listeners um, to help them build their own business? Jump in and do it. If you feel it in your gut, like don't question it. Like if you, if you feel that way, go for it and go 100%. I think all of everything that's happened is by steadily, consistently putting in the work and, you know, doing the searches. In my case, like with TCA is looking at the modules, making sure, you know, I'm doing certain things like, you know, websites, different things like that, but it's definitely putting in the work. You could say, you know, I worked 40 hours, but if you didn't, you know, do some research and look into what it is and you didn't move the needle a little bit, you know, you're not really doing it. So I would just say, go for it. Yes, go for it. Such good advice. Love it. Um, so I know you have done so much now with your business. Um, where do you see yourself going and how is the Craft Academy helping you achieve those goals? I see more for 2024. I'm hoping to have more events where I can hire other people. So I did a couple in 2023 and I loved it. And I love working with other calligraphers and, you know, TCA on top of that, like community wise has helped immensely because one, you know, your questions get answered Two, there's a community of people that are, I would say like trained similarly. And I knew I could trust it. And I, you know, Hey, who's available this day? You know, can you work with me? So I want more of that in 2024. So I want to hire more calligraphers have, you know, if, if I'm booked, be able to say like, Oh, I can send you a subcontract or just really be in charge of but I do like the events more where I get to work with other people I'm like let's go everyone gets hired so yeah so man that's really what I'm hoping for bigger group events yes <laughs> you can hire multiple calligraphers honestly those are just so much more fun like thinking back the ones like I had a slew of just like group events that I had in December last year and then I remember distinctively like, oh, I have to go by myself to this event. Like, I'm kind of sad <laughs> because it's just so much more fun to have coworkers, someone to like bounce ideas off of, kind of learn from, see what their setup is like, um, and really just like split the load. You know, it's just so much more fun in that aspect. Yeah. Yay, so love it. more in 2024. More of those in 2024, for sure. <laughs> Um, amazing. So as we get to the close of our interview, um, I love asking a set of questions for you as we close. Um, so what advice would you give to someone who's thinking about investing in themselves? Do it. Same thing back. Like if your gut tells you to do it, do it. Because I, if I could go back, obviously like my timeline, I believe everything happens for a reason, this and that, but like back in November, when I was like, oh, I'll just wait until I'm done coaching. I should have just done it at that point and just soaked it in for what it was worth. In my head, I was like, oh, you know, I don't necessarily have time to book events, this and that, but I wish I just did it. 
and then took it as I went. So do it even when you're not ready. Even if you're not ready, because you'll get ready or we'll you'll get, get ready. ready. <laughs> yep. Amazing. Um, so last question that I ask everyone, um, what would you tell yourself in 2020 when you first started knowing what you know now? I would tell myself the same thing. I would tell, like, just, just do it. Um, I probably would tell myself to avoid the other courses. I do feel like I made right some investments with the purpose, you know, the, the instinct of I'm investing, it'll help me this and that. But there are some resources that I did where I'm like, eh, that didn't really help me. I could have, you know, spent those dollars a different way and probably would have had a better mm -hmm. direct outcome to that. So um, if I knew what I knew back then, I, I mean, I don't even know if TCA was born in 2020, but I would have done it right away. But honestly, like I am super proud of you with all of you, all the things that you've accomplished. Um, I'm amazed at how much you have shifted your business to make sure that it fits within your life and what you envision it to be. And you have so much more freedom, clarity, and just overall joy living the life that you've designed for yourself and being able to balance your gymnastics love as well as your calligraphy love together. And you're still able to go on vacations and things. So that's uh, incredible. Thank you so much for building this, all the modules, building the community, fostering the community. Like it's insane. Team TCA really is the best because I know, you know, that you started it and, and took it off. And then even, you know, Tammy, want Juniper Stone Calligraphy, Kelly. Yeah. And Danny, like just everyone is so awesome. It's it really is incredible, honestly. So thank you. Yeah. Oh my gosh, of course. Absolutely. You know, we, we work really hard. Um, for me in like building the craft Academy and my number one thing was to be able to build a community that was all aligned all over, you know, everyone who actually preached community over competition and hire everyone and be able to pay fairly and just get everyone aligned on what our community could be instead of kind of gatekeeping information and uh, just thinking that there's not enough opportunity for everyone when there is. And, you know, we do handpick our our members to join for a reason. Like we don't have that add to cart option. You actually do have to go through a pretty rigorous interview um, to just make sure that you are aligned with what we are trying to create with our community. And I think we've done a really good job in making sure that we have people who are just incredible, amazing, open-minded, um, and kind and generous. And I think, you know, our community really does reflect that. And our team also reflects that as well. So when I go on maternity leave, I'm like literally not worried at all. They're just amazing. They've gone through the program. They have successes from the program. And we've done some pretty rigorous training too, uh, to make sure that the community is going to be supported no matter what, even if I'm not here. Um, and yeah, I'm just super happy with where things are at too. And just thankful that as I go into maternity leave, that things are going to be all set to go. And it's also thanks to community members just like you as well, who are just as generous and giving back as the team is. Thank you. We're in good hands. We'll miss you, but you're, we'll be OK until yeah. you come back. <laughs> Perfect. So as we bring our interview to a close, um, I have known and mentored Joanna for at least two years in the Craft Academy. We've known each other before that. Um, and I'm just so, so, so proud of the growth that she's experienced. And she's been able to work with amazing brands like CoverGirl, Lululemon, Killian Paris. And for anyone who resonated with this interview, please feel free to check out the Craft Academy. Uh, we are still enrolling clients for the year until October. Um, and we really do help you go from zero clients and kind of a, a burnout business, kind of like how Joanna had it, to now having being able to work with your dream clients and building the business that works for your life instead of the other way around. Um, we've got templates for literally everything, like your pitches, your emails, brand decks, contracts, so that when you do find your niche, you can actually build multiple forms of income and be able to create that business that works for you. Um, and honestly, with the transformation Joanna has experienced, I think that it actually happened. It can happen for anyone who applies themselves. So definitely feel free to check out the Craft Academy. And if you want to apply and join our amazing community, go ahead and go to wandercrafter.com slash apply. You can actually talk to a real life human being um, who will help you 
talk about your business, your goals, and really help you go from side hustle into full-time hustle. And with that, thank you so much, Joanna, for coming on and sharing your story. I'm so happy. Like, I don't know how many times I can say that without you guys getting cringy, but truly so incredibly happy to have you in the program, happy to have you create this amazing life for yourself. And honestly, I wouldn't be here without you either. So thank you so much, Joanna. Thank you, Rosie. You're the best. Thank you. All right. Bye, everybody. See you in the next video. <laughs>